Welcome to Implement This with Microsoft Business Solutions MVP Britta Rexted and co-host Matthew C. Anderson, where we have an insider's discussion around the things we consider when implementing Dynamics 365. In today's episode, sponsored by Ingenious, Britta and I continue our discussion about solutions, solution management, and layering of solutions. Ingenious Connector Enterprise integrates your telephone system into Microsoft Dynamics 365 and CRM for increased phone agent productivity. Features like screen pop, click to dial, and call logging enable efficient customer service and a comprehensive view of caller interactions. Learn more at ingenious.com. That's I N G E N I U S.com. Thanks, and now on with the show. And yes, we're back with another episode of Implement This. Hi, Britta. How are you? Good, Matt. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I want to make sure that we don't leave people hanging with this cliffhanger any longer about solutions and solution awareness. We had an episode. That's fun. We had. <laughs> I. It is fun, but it's it's time to uh, to hit the next installment of it here and get into some of those topics where we opened the door, we peeked in maybe a little tiny bit, but then we we slammed it and left people wanting more. Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess foundationally for this episode, if you haven't already listened to our first episode about solutions in Dynamics 365, go back and listen to that one first. I highly encourage you to do that. I'll keep a link in the show notes uh, because this will definitely be building upon that, even though we'll probably try to re-explain or revisit some of those items in a little bit more detail here. It's great uh, required reading to have before, uh, or required listening to have mm-hmm. <laughs> before this one. I really want to talk about some of the new features, because I think since solutions were the same for so long, uh-huh. um, it's entirely possible that you are good at solutions, you use solutions all the time for your job, and that you don't actually know about the new features we got in CRM 2016. Okay. And so they've been out for a little bit, but I keep on thinking to people who aren't aware of them, mm-hmm. and so I want to make sure that we talk about that. Sure. Because there's some great things. So on our last episode about solutions, we were talking about the constant problem that happens if you're not communicating with others and you're both moving unmanaged solutions and if I'm customizing the opportunity form and you're customizing the opportunity form and we mm-hmm. don't talk and you you import your second mm-hmm. you win so if there were things that I was working on that mattered to me you might have just wiped out all the changes that I made and mm-hmm. that's really frustrating cause a lot of issues so something that's really exciting that we got fairly recently um, are segmented solutions mm-hmm. and what's really really nice about that is instead of the good old days where I had to take the entire entity and everything that came with it into my solution, now I can pick exactly what I need. So I could take just a field, Mm -hmm. one field, or if I actually am working on the form, I can bring the form, but if I'm not, I can leave it alone. So if you're working on the form and I'm actually writing workflows, I don't need to move the opportunity form and blow up what you're doing. I can just bring my workflows in and then they work alongside what you're doing. So segmented solutions are really, really easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 in love with these being able to select the components that are actually coming through and i Mm -hmm. think you know we didn't we didn't dig too much into what types of components come along in the last episode so let's let's go through some of them here just to give an idea of why that selective nature of them can be so important so uh, let's start with kind of the entity model because there's a lot there to to chew on and one of them is for an entity, just the basic metadata about the entity itself is one of the things that can be there. You know, the name of the entity mm-hmm. the and, and some of the configuration, the options that are chosen for that, that entity itself. And then each of those components that you mentioned, you know, uh, let's say different forms, for example. You could have two, three, four different forms, but only one of them be selected for uh, one of those segmented solutions. Views. Now, let's think about this one because it's only system views that are a solution aware component. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, when we'll, I think we'll use the term solution aware quite a bit in this episode, but, you know, just let's make sure we're clear on definition of what that means. Do you have a good definition for solution aware or what, what that is? To me, that just means I can put it in a solution and move it. Mm-hmm. And so things like, for example, anything with personal in it, so personal views, personal charts, personal dashboards. Yep. Unfortunately, I can't add those to a solution and I can't move them, which means 
you know, if we build them in production, great, because that's usually where my users are anyway. Mm -hmm. But if I move them somewhere else or they build them somewhere else, they get left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Good. Good enough for me. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, back to the individual entity components, system views, those are one of those components that can be selectively added or not. Um, charts the same way, fields the same way, keys, which is the, you know, kind of foreign, foreign keys, keys from another system that dynamics can help enforce the fact that those are going to stay as unique values relationships between different record types. So if you're going to be manipulating that, any of the field mapping that comes along with those relationships, all solution aware. Uh, also things like business rules, if you're using business rules, uh, whether those are in the context of a form or whether they're in the context of the overall entity, those are a solution aware component as well. Um, and then, you know, Lastly, the kind of the hierarchy settings, if you're using hierarchies within, within a, an entity, you ha if you have that enabled, those settings can be moved along as part of a solution as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for entities themselves, which is only one component that can be brought over in solutions, there's a lot there. Um, and making sure that you're not stepping on someone else's toes if you're both working on uh, the same entity, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to be able to make sure that you don't have, have that stepping on toes moment. Absolutely. And it's really easy to use, which is nice. Um, if you've gone in and made a solution in a new enough version that you have this option, mm -hmm. um, it's just checking a box. So you either include all of the assets when you go to add that entity, or you go through and pick specific things. So it's really easy. It's not a hard skill set to pick up. You just have to remember to think that way, that you don't just necessarily need to add everything. I think you probably rarely need to add everything, unless you're bringing whole brand new entities into an environment. If you're just making small changes, a segmented solution is a much better way to go. Yeah, and, and the, the chance of sideswiping something else that you've done or maybe grabbing, if you're going from a dev environment to a test environment uh, and, and exporting that stuff, sometimes in dev you've tried two or three or four different approaches to something and maybe you didn't go through and back everything out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, delete that um, you know, mistitled attribute that's out there, if you're using a selective solution or a, a segmented solution to be able to move those components, you, you have checked the boxes next to the items that you want to bring and hopefully you're not bringing in that, that accidental field that you probably should have deleted but you didn't because who cares, it's a dev environment. Um, you're not actually accidentally bringing it forward when you use the selective um, components out of that. Yes. So great, really powerful. Um, something you should, if you have access to a more modern version, something you should be using. So make sure you take some time to take a look at that. The other thing that I want to talk about is patches, okay. which I don't love the way that things were named. So we have in this new kind of feature section, we have segmented solutions, solution patches, and cloning solutions, which we'll get to next. Um, mm -hmm. But solution patches are just, they're like itty bitty little mini solutions. So it's just little things that you can add and tack on without having to um, update the whole solution or things like that. You know, I haven't actually found a lot of use for them yet, and I'm worried it's because I don't, I haven't caught the vision for them. Mm -hmm. So I know what they do uh, more from a training perspective than anything, but have <laughs> you gotten to use these in the field? So the where, where I've seen them come more into play is in more enterprise uh, implementation environments um, in places where there is a little bit more rigor and control around what's being put out there. Also, in more of a, an ISV type of situation, mm -hmm. they become um, uh, they become more more uh, nuanced in how you can actually have a level of control. Um, there is actually a, a great you know if you're looking to try to grasp the concept of this, there was a great video that was posted that came out of, I think it was the Inspire Conference in 2017, that really helped show some of the why behind those. Um, I can include a link in the show notes for Great. that. Um, I would totally butcher trying to explain it here, but it was very, it was very well articulated in the context of that session. And 
you know, not surprisingly, I, I think it was Inspire because that's going more toward the, the partner community who's helping drive some of those things forward. They're more going to be the uh, intended audience for, for that. Okay. So something, if you're going to go, as an admin, if you're going to go play with patches, something you need to keep in mind is that it actually locks your solution. So when you start adding patches, until you update your solution and roll them all in, your solution itself can't be updated other than those little patches. Mm -hmm. So something to keep in mind. Which brings us to clone solutions, which I don't like the name at all. I don't think it makes any sense. I'm just going to go right out there and say it. I don't like the name. I can't think of a better one, so I try not to <laughs> criticize things that I couldn't improve. Um, I don't know what the answer should be. Tweet us. But um, <laughs> I don't like it being called clone solutions because to me, that feels like a copy-paste or a save-as or one of those kind of actions. And what it means is that you're rolling all of those patches up into the solution and it's one unified solution again. So I don't know why that name makes sense, but that's what cloning solution is. We'll live with it. <laughs> we'll live with it, yep. And then cloning patches is just what you do to create a new patch. So um, once again, same word, also confusing, makes a little more sense for cloning a patch. Just further makes cloning a solution sound way more confusing than it is. So just remember, clone solution is just a roll-up of all the cute little patches into one nice solution that's now unlocked and you can do things with it again. Okay, so we have solutions that could be managed or unmanaged. We have patches for solutions. We have clone solutions. We have clone patches. Yep, and segmented solutions. And segmented solutions. Oh, we should maybe just start throwing in words to stress people out, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, when you look at the other side of that, there's the target environment that solutions are going into, which, depending on uh, kind of what, what that environment looks like, you, you may or may not have all of the same solutions in that target environment that you had in other environments. So there's, there's more of a, there's, there's more room for things to be different between mm -hmm. those. There's more room for things to be confusing. There's more room for potentially having um, like a, a failure or a missing required component or those sorts of things. So I think it would probably be worth some time of talking about working with multiple solutions across multiple environments. Some of the things that you know, you've know you learned in having worked with that, some of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly around that, maybe some lessons learned that people can take away from. Yeah, definitely. So one limitation of a podcast is that I can't talk with my hands and like I do, but it, you can't see it. <laughs> and um, you can't see the images that we're looking at up on our screen right now. And so we'll make sure that's in the show notes for you. But there is a great link on docs.microsoft.com that shows how solutions, when you have a whole bunch of them in the same environment, how they stack and how they relate to each other. Because there is kind of a pecking order. You almost always have multiple solutions at play. And there's a way that they get along with each other and a way that they stack and a way that different cu customizations win. Yep. And um, as much as we'll try to do that justice, it's important you go check out the link so that you can see that image for yourself because it is really valuable. I think helps explain it. Definitely. Better. Definitely. So, you know, at the, at the most core of dynamics is the system solution. Mm -hmm. Or the and, base solution. Same name. Yep. And, and this even... The, the definition of the system or base solution a couple of years ago versus where it's at now in Dynamics 365, if you're starting fresh with version 9, it's a little bit different. Um, so, you know, that, that system solution is the, the, the guts of Dynamics. Mm -hmm. That's the, the stuff that enables the user interface, the most core of the core entities, your contact, your account, your activities, uh, and all of the components that allow you to work with solutions, do your configuration, do your customization. And then on top of that, there are going to be uh, additional solutions. And this is one of those places where the current version of Dynamics is even a little bit more componentized mm -hmm. than where it was a couple of years ago because you used to get everything including you know cases and opportunities and the things from say the sales or the service workloads as part of the most base system solution but it's been kind of decoupled mm -hmm. um, so those are those are part of managed solutions that are part of the the platform these days 
Um, so that's where you start to see that first layer. And most organizations are going to have one, if not all of those uh, kind of core, you know, sales, service, marketing solutions out there in their environment, but not necessarily. I mean, that's a that's the you know historic dynamics experience inside of me talking, not just the the here and now, and for all those new folks who are just getting to know the platform. Mm-hmm. The base solution is what if you've ever gone and um, just click customize. Um, just without picking a particular solution, you're customizing the base solution. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has it. That's if you click those buttons like we were talking about in the other solutions episode. If you just go customize the form just right there in the UI, that's what you're customizing. And so you definitely have one, and it can be exported as an unmanaged solution. Um, (laughs) uh, Don't do that, but you can. So we're just going to trust you with that knowledge to be responsible. Okay, guys? Um, <laughs> well, and, and how valuable is, uh, I mean, I, I've never found a real valuable reason for un- no. exporting the entire system. I think if you're just really solution. indecisive and you didn't know what your system did, you're like, ah, I don't want to look at it. Just export <laughs> the whole thing. Um, take a little bit more time. Care a little bit more. Be intentional with what you're doing and actually make a solution on purpose. Okay? Yeah. Save, save Go back to our first people. episode on solutions. Build stuff through a solution. Do yep. it. <laughs> yep. Do it on purpose. Uh, before it's slow by. So um, once we get that base solution, then we also have our managed solutions. And this, for most people, have some kind of managed solutions in their environment. So this might be something that came in from your partner. This might be something that you got back in the day off of CodePlex or um, GitHub or something else. This is where, in all likelihood, if you paid for a solution from an ISV, mm-hmm. it's going to come in at that layer as a managed solution. Um, yeah, well, and even, uh, you know, one of my favorite things to point toward as far as managed solutions these days is Microsoft's scheduling engine that they have as part of Dynamics does come in as a managed solution. It's not, it, while it is from Microsoft and it's good core functionality that can be built upon, it's, it's not out there by default. It's a managed solution that comes in. Mm-hmm. Same thing for a lot of the, the, the things like... Gamifications or, or, like that. Gamification or organizational insights. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of those components that have been added over the years are really handled as managed solutions because they're not, they're not part of that minimum set of things you need in your organization to be able to be effective. For a lot of people, yeah, there are options they're going to check the box for, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And just like we were talking about in unmanaged solutions in our other episode, um, the last one in wins, even with managed solutions. So they're stacking on top of each other, and we'll we'll get into where um, things outside of the managed solution little bracket, where they all fit. But Mm -hmm. within managed solutions, within that layer in your environment, the most recent one you brought in wins. So there is a conflict between, let's say, two managed solutions are both using the account form. Um, the last one is going to win. Yep. There are other ways to beat it, but within them, uh, last one in. And that's just kind of the rule in general. Yep. Cool. And so then once you get through that managed solution layer, you have one or more unmanaged solutions that can go on top of it. So mm-hmm. looking back at our last episode, we talked a lot about kind of using a, an unmanaged solution to move things, say, from dev to test. Uh, this is where those would come in. So as you're, you know, kind of setting up or building your, um, you know, lower environments, if you're not starting with a, you know, copy of production, um, you know, make sure that you have the um, kind of the managed solutions in there before you start bringing in your unmanaged solutions. Um, and also, if you're doing work that includes both an unmanaged, uh, managed and unmanaged solution. Um, you know, make sure that you're keeping track of what all of those are, um, because the the order of operations on these does become important. You know, you you touched on it with last one in matters for managed solutions. Same thing for unmanaged solutions here. So, make sure that as you're going through and, and um, you know working with that, or perhaps doing a trial uh, deployment, you know, getting ready for your actual push to production, that you're taking note of the order that those are actually going in. And that's where segmented solutions are so beautiful because it allows us to just pick the very specific things that we need to move around and we're not moving pretty much the whole darn system over and over and over again because then you're overriding things, you're bumping into people. Move the smallest solution you can is kind of what I I shoot for. Yeah, yep, absolutely. And it's, it's 
pretty well done in the in the platform itself when you are creating a solution and selectively adding components in it will prompt you through the user interface of what some dependencies are and what things might be missing you know it gives you that prompt to say hey do you actually want to bring in these other components as well because they're required by the ones that you just brought in and that's an, inter- an important thing to talk about because if they're already there, you don't need to move them again. Mm-hmm. And so once again, in this scenario where you and I are both customizing and you're working yep. on forms and I'm working on automation, I don't want to overwrite what you're doing. Even though um, my workflow says, we're really going to need this entity and all of its stuff. Yep. If I know it's already in the test environment and I just want to move my piece, mm-hmm. I might not check that box to add in all the required components because yep. I know they're already there. I know they're in the target system and I don't want to overwrite what you're doing. Yep. So I'm just going to move my little tiny piece. Exactly. If you're working alone and um, you're not sure if everything's there, then it's it's less scary to check that box and move things in. I do tend to bring required components with me mm-hmm. um, when I'm really confident of who the players are that are customizing and that I'm not going to accidentally overwrite what someone's doing. Right. Yep. hundred percent. Okay. So we've, we've got all of these layers. We've got system slash base solution. We've got managed solutions brought in in a specific order. We have unmanaged solution or unmanaged uh, customizations and solutions that have been uh, handled through the environment. And then we have finally, ta-da, the stuff people see. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Application behavior. Um, which is the culmination of all of those different components there. Um, and, and really, I mean, that is, that is where the rubber meets the road from an end user standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a lot of complexity that they never know sits, you know, underneath the water on that one. You know, it's, uh, a, I, I like that, that visual in the, the, that we've referenced in the show notes because You know, it really is like the surface of the water and then everything underneath down to the the center of the earth. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So many layers, not all stacks, so that's really important. So something I think is important to think about in tandem, if you're bringing in managed solutions, especially if you're bringing in tools, there's so many great hacks. We talk about the XRM toolbox all the time on the show. There's other great solutions that let you do more powerful things, workflows you can't do out of the box, things like that that are totally fine to have in your system, you just need to keep in mind they might give you power to create customizations that aren't going to move. Uh-huh. Um, for example, there's one, and we'll, I can throw it in the show notes, but it's a great workflow plugin that lets you look at the security role the user has mm-hmm. and then make determinations based on that, which I love because then it lets my workflow behavior be different depending on who's using the workflow. Oh. So I really, really like it a lot. Great tool. Um, something I learned the hard way, though, is that the system admin security role doesn't move. So when you put the system admin security role in a workflow using that custom piece, uh-huh. it's going to blow everything up. Okay. So yep. um, it worked just great for security roles that were in the solution that was moving with it. That all worked great. Mm-hmm. Um, system admin role blew it up for me. Got so it. there's some things like that where you can be given um, more powerful tools than the solution will let you get away with. Yep. And so... That's where testing is really important, um, and just knowing what you're knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Just play with it. Um, you just you just have to be aware that the more that you reach, kind of outside the box and go out of the box adjacent, kind of those tools yeah. that are aren't quite they're not quite Microsoft tools, but they're they're well respected and they're safe to use. Um, solutions might create an issue for you when you go to move them. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, even looking at some very, very, very standard components, some of these things just aren't going to be solution aware. You're not going to have to be able to move them. Mm-hmm. Think about things like users, teams, uh, business uh, business unit structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, those those things are not solution aware. So data. So, yeah. I mean, and, and all of your data. I mean, all of definitely all of that data, whether it's reference data or data that's actually in the environment. Um, there's there's good reasons for that and why you don't want to have all of that coming through, but it's that you have to put some thought into it as you're moving things between environments. They also reinforce those best practices. You shouldn't be writing things to a specific user. You know, you shouldn't have mm-hmm. your workflows looking for a specific user's name. You shouldn't be tying to specific records if you don't have to. So um, solution 
hygiene just kind of enforces those good things you should you should be doing anyway. But once you start using solutions the way they're designed, it reinforces that good behavior that you should do. Yeah. But now you kind of have yep. to. So stuff. Yeah. Well, and, and I don't want to come across like I'm just pointing out all the stuff that doesn't work with solutions because there's a heck of a lot that does. I mean, I spent some time a little earlier in this episode going through solution aware components inside of entities, mm -hmm. but there's all the things beyond that that are still solution aware. So, you know, whether that's workflows, which you've commented on, whether that's things like connection roles, you know, uh, email templates uh, and, and those kind of things, but shoot, not document templates. So no Excel templates, no word templates, at uh, least not yet, you know, come on, listen, vote that up on, on, uh, ideas <laughs> so to, to try to get that in there. Um, but, you know, you certainly can bring things like security roles. Uh, a little bit uh, newer one is apps as you kind of create an app to front end certain components within Dynamics. Um, those are solution aware um, and they can, uh, it, it's, it's uh, really nice uh, the way that that's done there and you're not having to build the, the app in your, um, in your production environment. Um, also, along the lines of some of the newer components, virtual entities, both the, the definition of the virtual entities and the data sources for those virtual entities are solution aware. So those can be created in dev, moved through to test and production, you know, which is a really good thing because it does involve development uh, in doing that. So I will uh, push the glasses back up on my nose after that nerd alert. I <laughs> went through a lot there, I know, but, <laughs> um, you know, definitely, definitely just wanted to call out some of those, uh, some of those components. Definitely. All right. So I, I think it feels like we're getting toward a wrap on this second solution episode. There's probably some specifics or workaround things we could come back and revisit another time but i'm feeling pretty good for right now yeah what i would love to hear from our listeners is where they're getting stuck with solutions what they can't move what they don't understand that kind of thing there is so much nuance here and i think we could probably down the road have some kind of a, like a hack kind of episode about yeah. how you get around you and i have to use creative solutions creative creative ways of getting around solutions and other things every day and so there's probably some need for that conversation too. Yeah, or maybe we maybe we have a debate episode where we pit ourselves against each other about uh, what what level of uh, how how precise you need to be about what goes into a segmented solution. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I take it down. Uh, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't get too competitive. But I think, yeah, there's, there's so much here, and hopefully we've opened the doors for people to at least start using it, and then also modernize their approach to solutions, because there's so many great options now, and then um, open the doors for more conversation in the future. Excellent. Well, I think uh, it's a good place to wrap for today. Sounds good. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Britta. You've been listening to Implement This with Britta Rexted and Matthew C. Anderson. Do you have a business problem you'd like us to discuss on the show? reach us through our website, implementthis.org, where you can also subscribe to the podcast. We're on Twitter, too. Britta is at MacGyverCRM, and I'm at MC Anderson. Thanks so much for listening.